Well, good afternoon. It's now about 3.30 in the afternoon of Wednesday, the 22nd of August. I'm Andy, and this is my allotment. Just over a week since my last video. Um, I've done quite a lot down here in that time. Um, just not got around to doing a video to show you guys. So I thought, do a quick update now for my records and also to show everybody who's interested what's going on. So, start off with the squashes. Um, we have got a couple of green pumpkins here at the front. There's one there, which I put my hand on it. You can see the size of it. It's fair sized. It's and that one as well. That one's about a decent melon size. The other one's a bit bigger. Uh, butternut squashes. Disappointing, really. I've got one tiny one there, which is about half the size of a normal butternut squash. It might grow. I don't know. It's not really got anything else on there. There's a couple of non-pollinated bits in there it's just not throwing out female flowers the pumpkins on the other hand are doing well now the most astute of you more astute of you rather may notice that there's one missing that's because we had a show uh, at the weekend which i entered a pumpkin into in the other cucurbit class um, didn't get placed unfortunately um i did it yes it came second sorry it did get, get placed it came second um I didn't actually manage to go to the show because I was away at the weekend, but a friend took them in for me. And um, I'm very pleased, to be honest. It's the first show I've ever entered. Um, another pumpkin in the middle there. That one is probably somewhere in the region of two foot six across, and depth is about 18 inches. So it's a fair sized pumpkin, that one. So I'm pleased with that. Coming down here, come to another pumpkin. Now, this, this is the pièce de résistance. I mean, Look at that. That one, put my foot alongside it so you can see, I'll put my foot on it even, uh, it's quite big. That's probably somewhere in the region of 36 inches around uh, from one half to another. So altogether, probably about, about six foot round if you ever put a tape around it, which I'm not inclined to do. That is going to be really heavy because we've got another two months of growing to do before the end of October. So that is growing about one to two centimetres per day. So if it carries on like that, it'll be another 30 to 60 centimetres bigger by the end of the year. Courgettes. Getting loads and loads and loads of courgettes off these plants. The yellow ones this year are outperforming the greens by a factor of 10, I think. Oh, maybe not that. Maybe double. But it feels like it because I've got nothing but yellow courgettes everywhere. And as you see, there's more yellow ones down there. The green ones are on the other side, underneath all that lot, which might be why they're not getting as many flowers ripened as the others. I'm not certain. I've also got some green courgettes on the left hand side of that squash bed there, but I'm not sure why we're not getting many green courgettes, but I'm not caring because I'm getting loads anyway. Now, Cinderella pumpkins. These are the classic round orange pumpkins. Now this is the one I've been showing you all along. This is one I'm very happy with. It's the right shape, right size. Not bad, you know, decent size. And then when I was clearing stuff the other day, look what I found under the leaves. Now that is even bigger. I mean, look at that. <laughs> That was hiding. How the hell did that hide? And I didn't see it. I really don't know. Anyway. Um, strawberries. Lovely, lovely green growth, as you can see. Lots of flowers and some late strawberries coming on. I've had some for our lunch today and they were very nice. Um, gooseberries. Now, we've still got lots of gooseberries on. I've taken most of these off and I've made gooseberry jam with them. And were, that was very, very nice. Gooseberry jelly. I took uh, four kilos off here, but I still got quite a lot on. Now we've had some of these today and they're actually really, really sweet. So the longer you leave them, the better it is. Uh, I've obviously never had a chance to leave them before now. Um, i show you my grandson's bed. He's got some beans in here, as you can see. These are about six foot high and they've got some decent uh, pods on them at the moment. Uh, he's not been down here for a few weeks to be able to pick these, which is unfortunate. Now he's got some sweet corn in here as well. Now. His sweet corn is about four foot tall. That's about as high as it gets. It has got cobs on. In fact, it's got two cobs on. Not big cobs, but I'll show you mine later on and you'll see the difference between the beds. Now, I've always had really, really good sweet corn wherever I've grown it, apart from this bed. So I'm guessing that it's probably because this one's been neglected a little bit and not had as much done to it, um, fertility-wise, as, as the others. Um, he's got some raspberries still coming on, rather late and rather nice, lovely raspberries. Um, He's got sweet, uh, sorry, not sweet, he's got uh, strawberries on the other side, but all his are finished. There's nothing left on there. And then the rhubarb is coming to an end. Um, picked a couple of sticks to go in the show, but I didn't really know how to show it. 
apparently when you show it you leave the heel on at the bottom and you leave an inch or two of the leaves to show that it's not been artificially shortened etc so I didn't know how to show it so I got disqualified straight away from mine but which is a shame now one thing I wanted to show you up here is something I've just finished today um, I've been talking about making this into a herb bed I've had all the herbs in the greenhouse for God knows how long now and I've finally done it so this little twig at the front is a goji berry it may not survive if it doesn't it's in the right place to come out because it won't disturb anything else behind it is a rosemary which was suffering and going yellow then next over the big green one with the purple with the, with the uh, pointy leaves is a, a pineapple sage in front of that some basil plants i've never grown basil before but i actually managed to make it this time and behind it at the back a couple more sages um, in the middle there we have got some um fennel i think it is no it's not it's parsley sorry that's Italian parsley and French parsley at the back and English parsley at the front or flat leaf. And we've got two thyme plants here, some chives, some caraway, uh, some lemon balm and there's the fennel. And you can tell that the fennel is long, long fronds, etc. A lot of these may not do anything because they're too late coming out, but I've given them a chance. Then over there I've got the original oregano plant that was in here and three other small ones at the front so they'll have a big mass of oregano. We use loads of that. My plan is to grow as much of these as possible, um, pick them later on in the season, just before everything starts dying back, dehydrate them and then chuck them all up when we've got some dried herbs. One thing I've also done here is made a separate walled off with flagstones so they won't spread too much hopefully, mint bed. I've got chocolate mint on the left. I've got uh, lemon mint in the middle and apple mint on the right hand side. Now I've had mint plants, we love mint, uh, so I've had mint plants around for quite a while in the greenhouse and I've done nothing with them to my shame, but these are them now, so hopefully I've got them in the right time. Uh, all the black currants have been chopped back because they were causing a nuisance coming onto the decking area. The decking area itself has been cleaned, despite the fact I've got soil all over it again here. My mum's been down the last couple of days helping me because uh, basically it gets her out of the house, it gets me out of the house and it gets us to do stuff together which we haven't done for a long time so it's been quite good so thanks for that mum. Um, the plan is that I've taken all the weeds out the back here, or most of them anyway, around the back of the uh, black currant bushes. I'm going to fill all that in with a thick layer of wood chip mulch which will hold these uh, flagstones up, the little uh, one, one foot square flags. Uh, well, at the moment I've got bits of wood behind propping them up. So hopefully I'll be able to get a big thick layer of mulch behind it to hold that up as well. And it will also mean that if this weed, uh, mint does start to spread, it will be very obvious to see and it will keep the weeds down. So win, 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 all the way around. Blackberries. We've picked about two and a half kilos of blackberries all, to, all told between us. And as you can see, these were all picked originally uh, on Monday, the last time we picked them. And there's so many more left on and so many more to come. We've probably got somewhere in the region of another four or five kilos of blackberries on here if we get them all. I'm very, very happy with that lot. Um, right, if you remember a long time back, underneath these, this netting, I planted out some little brassicas that I'd had in the greenhouse. Hadn't really done very well. A lot of them got hammered with um, scorched and, and all the rest of it when I was away. Um, so I put them under here to see how they do. As you can see, a couple of them are doing really, really well. The couple have been hammered by um, moths, I think, or caterpillars rather. Uh, there's a little bit of the stump there. So I've got to get in there and weed it all out and then put some sort of proper covering over this one. Um, I've learnt a new way of putting these nets up, so I'm going to try that in a bit, but not today because it's just starting to rain now. Um, carrots. got quite five different varieties of carrots in here, five rows. Uh, I've harvested some of them because the first time I harvested were weedy little tiny things and they weren't good for anything, but now we're getting some decent carrots out of it so pleased with that now this bed was my dumping ground it had an old frame on top of it it was full of all sorts of weeds a comfrey we decided to spread all the way through it so i've cleared it all out the comfrey is now at the back uh what i've got here is i've got mint i've got four more mint plants a couple of spearmints a couple of garden mints the theory being that comfrey is a thug it will thug its way through any bed mint is a thug so if the two try to thug against each other, I'm hoping that they will keep each other in check a little bit. Another thug in the garden is horseradish. Now I've got a horseradish plant in this corner. I've kept it far enough away from the mint so that when it does grow, and this plant does grow into a big plant, it's got a fair area to cover. 
and hopefully the mint won't interfere with it too much it won't interfere with the mint and the comfrey won't interfere with any of them that's the theory we'll see how it goes square foot gardening bed is looking a bit of a mess at the moment things are coming out not much else to go in the white flowers here are all rocket which i've left for the bees uh, we're not going to harvest any more out of it i don't need the space so i'm not particularly bothered about taking it out uh, the yellow flowers at the back they were mizuna again not bothered about taking them out um, one thing i have got in here now is lots of beetroot i have got some destroyed two beetroots in there which look quite nice uh, fairly small ones in this one which is um, voltardi not particularly large ones but i have had a couple of big ones out there they were nice uh, spring onions doing well underneath that lot of mess there's turnips which I haven't got out yet I've got some golden beetroot under there which you can just about see uh, sorrel I keep trying to dig it out and it won't go so I'm not sure what else to do with that um, all the tomatoes you see in there are ones that were in the greenhouse um, surplus requirements for in the greenhouse I thought I'd bring them out here and give them a chance planted them up two weeks ago and they're doing fantastic and the uh, lot of greenery you can see there in between the tomatoes is uh, broccoli rave, 60 day rave. And I've got one courgette as well, which has actually had a flower on it. That's been open today, but it's going a bit dark now, so it's closed itself up. Okay, um, beans. As you can see, these beans here are eight to 10 foot tall. The ones in our jacks bed are getting to be about six. Um, very, very prolific. Just look at that lot. We've had so far about uh, four kilos of beans off these. And looking at them, we've probably got as many as that left on, if not more. Um, we're going to be eating beans for the rest of the year, I think. I still have plenty left over, so I'm not too concerned about those. Um, one thing I did find today when I was looking around is this is a white currant bush. And uh, we've still got white currants on it. Lots of them. And these are on in the middle. Now they've gone quite sweet. Still a little tart, but quite sweet. Leeks, these were put in about two weeks ago. Uh, I bought some leek plants because my own seeds didn't come up. So I stuck them in, and apart from ignoring the, <laughs> the mare's tail coming up through the middle of them all, they're doing quite well. Um, other side to the black blackberries, I have got raspberries, which are all been cut back, and grapes. Now, I've never grown grapes before, but these have been in about three years. And look at that. That looks like a proper bunch of grapes. I'm absolutely gobsmacked by this. There's that one there is really good as well. Um, I'm hoping they'll get a bit bigger and they'll swell. Uh, they're getting lots and lots of water now because it's raining quite a bit. Um, one concern I've got is I've got lots of like brown spots on the grapes. I've got to do some research to find out what that is. If it's not good, I just whip that bit off. I'm not too concerned about that because I've got plenty of other bunches on here. Okay, um, right, potatoes. These are my... Um, Sapo Mira potatoes so they're doing quite well there's no flowers on them as yet uh, but they're in the buckets as you can see now these have suffered quite a lot during the, uh, um, the, the, the drought because there's no way for them to get extra water uh, and this bucket at the end hasn't got anything in it well nothing's growing in it I'm pretty certain I planted the potatoes but nothing's come up but still not too concerned on that with respect um, the bags in the middle there are three bags there and they've got pink fir apple potatoes in. Now they seem to have fared the best out of the buckets and the bags um, experiment I'm doing uh, to try and see what was better. I think it's possible because black buckets and sunshine means hot buckets. Green and grey bags in sunshine means warm, not red hot. So I think that might have kept the water in there a little bit better as well. Uh, also, the fact I put no drainage holes in, it's just going to drain naturally through the weave in the fabric. So they think I think they've retained their moisture a bit better, and the flowers are coming on. Normally, when the flowers come on, it means that the heart, the crop is ready. Um, I have uh, taken one of the first earlies here, which is also a sapo, sapo colfi, I think it is. Uh, I took one of those a couple of weeks ago just to check it. It's been badly hammered by the drought, even worse than the main crop. Uh, these were flopping all over the place most of the time so because they've not had the weather and not had the water sorry there's not a lot they, they've been able to produce so we've ended up with tiny tiny potatoes so I've left them we've had lots of rain recently as you can see they're now green and healthy a few yellowy bits on the leaves it's not blight it's drought that's done that to them so again very pleased with those now this frame that I made is full of brassicas and as you can see they are pushing their way through the top 
we've got a purple sprouted broccoli, which has sprouted and gone too far already. I mean, look at the state of that. It's pushing the top up. Uh, and it started to go to seed, so I'm going to have to harvest that fairly soon and cut it back. Uh, not supposed to be ready until June, uh, until January, so I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong with that. Oh, I did anything wrong. Um, this was normal Calabrese uh, broccoli. I don't know if you can see through there. There's one in the middle of that. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is one in the middle, honestly. We've had three out of here so far. There's little ones like that that aren't really doing very much, and some nice big ones. And then on the front there, these are all Brussels sprouts, along with quite a bit of fat hen in there, which I've not really had opportunity to get in and get rid of. So I'm hoping the Brussels sprouts will be new nice. They're going to be red Brussels sprouts, so they should be quite good. We will see. Um, quickly show inside the greenhouse. Now, I've been talking about not having any red tomatoes for ages, apart from the little ones and the tumbling toms. Uh, but I've trimmed back all the foliage from the lower leaves, as you can see. And this little truss of tomatoes here, I think it was this one. No, it was this one. This little truss there had three red tomatoes at the top. So we've had those for our dinner today and they were lovely. That's a taste tomato. The, the other ones we had were from the, um, the supermarket and they were just not anywhere near as nice. But there's lots and lots of other tomatoes on here. Lots of other trusses. I mean, look at this one. That's going to be a nice truss with flowers still coming on it. There's another one there behind it, which is hanging over the string, which is holding everything back. I've had to tie string in various places to keep these things up so it's tied around the frame of the greenhouse i did have it clipped on but the clips kept coming off because these things are weighing a ton now lots and lots of fruit lots and lots of foliage and look at the size of them huge huge tomatoes i mean that's a decent sized tomato these are um money makers so as you'd expect from money maker quite big quite nice um then at this side we've got some um uh, what are these? Is the um, ah, I've forgotten the name of them. Hang on a second, let me read the label. San Marzano, red plum. So again, nice big tomato, but not going anywhere near red at the moment. And lots of them through the plant. Um, well, not that many to be honest on this one, but lots of flowers going all the way up here. Leaving these flowers on because why not? If they do anything fantastic, we still got rest of August and September to go. We're going to have a nice rest of the year, we're being told. Um, lots and lots of different tomatoes in here. Lots of uh, little uh, red red pear tomatoes. More money makers. More red pears at the back. Oops, sorry. Red pears at the back there. Quite a lot of them there, actually. And lots and lots of other up here. These are going to be Gardens Delight, which is what we had earlier. And that's a nice, nice truss of tomatoes there. Half a dozen on it still. And we've taken three off that went red. And then there's another one there with half a dozen on. So overall, looking quite good. Um, chilies. These are uh, long chilli peppers. Whether they should go red or not, I'm not certain. I couldn't find the actual packets. I think um, either I bought these or these were um, sown from seed. I've used all the packet and thrown the packet away. So I'm not sure if these should go red or not. But they're getting a decent size. I mean, look at that. That's a decent sized pepper for that. And this one's even bigger. I mean, look at that one. That's probably eight inches long. So I'm looking forward to these. Um, now these two at the front, these are long red um, Marconi peppers. These are the, the uh, ones you see in the supermarkets, which you can buy um, long red horn shaped peppers. Um, that one's got the, the traditional shape. We're not big enough. That one's a bit of a stunty thing. I'm not sure what's happened there. I don't think we'll get any more than those two on it. And then these here, these are a new variety that I've got. These are now called curry peppers. Um, I answered something on Facebook a while back and got sent a free pack of peppers. So, decent sized peppers. Uh, chilies rather. And they're supposed to be quite hot, so I'm looking forward to having those. Uh, peas. Um, never got these in the ground. I just didn't have a chance to get them in. That's a weed, so I can come out. And it's out. That's a dead leaf. Right, so they've suffered because they're in this little tray. They've not really had the space to go anywhere. And so we've ended up with pods on the peas, but not very many of them. We've got pods there. Pods there that really aren't doing very much. Um, if I get anything out of them, fine. I'm very happy with that. Um, I've got a poor germination in here. I've probably got something in the region of 30% germination from what I from the plants I put in. But as I can't get it outside anyway, I'm not too bothered. Right, uh, a couple of things more to show you. And I'm on 20 minutes already. 
Right, sweet corn. Doing really, really well. As you can see, the sweet corn is up at seven, eight foot high in some places. And the cobs are doing extremely well. These are quite nice. We've had a lot of these already. Um, they're very, very nice, very, very sweet. And I'll get one or possibly even two per plant. Again, this is like that. Lovely. And I think this is another one there. That's a huge one, that. I mean, let's say it's state of that. So they're really, really good. Again, sweet corn, eight foot tall here in our jack's bed, a lot smaller. Right, this is a brassica cage. Um, now, these are cabbages. These are long, pointy, sweetheart cabbages. Uh, there's a gap at the top because I took one out to send in for the show at weekend. I got second place with that, so I'm very pleased with that. Um, kohlrabi, as you see one on the far side. I've not got many of those left. Again, I sent one of those in for the show and uh, got second place with that as well. Uh, all the round cabbages are pretty much out. Um, something's eating them. That one that wasn't touched a couple of days ago, it's now being nibbled out. Something's going in there. And something's just excavating that. I don't know what it is. It's under the netting, so it's not pigeons. That's what I, my first thought was. So I really don't know what's going on. Wish I did. But anyway, um, I've been talking for far too long. 20 minutes is far too long. So thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. I uh, appreciate all your comments. And if you do like the video, please press the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed and want to see more of what I do, please hit the subscribe button. I'll be doing videos pretty much every week through the year. And uh, I hope you like what I do. Bye for now.